No, 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 no. T I G E R S. Fight, 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 fight. Mike, it's not even a top a thousand moment all time. Okay, Tommy, shut the hell up, man. Mike! Oh, of course, he... I'm gonna go with the right answer. It's Ryan Eads of the Baltimore Orioles. He only he's only wore the number eighty for uh, um, eight games. He's only one of two players. You know what? No, no, I'm not gonna take this. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We are back with episode number eighty six. Looks a little different. Connor is unfortunately not here, but we have a great guest, my brother Tommy Kane. Tommy, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Mike and other Mike and the other Tommy, how are you guys doing today? <laughs> doing great. Doing pretty swell. I'm excited to have a uh, Tommy here. You know, Connor's been making some pretty bad takes the past couple of weeks, so I'm excited <laughs> to get a new voice in. We'll see I if know. Connor's actually watching this, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, if he's watching this, he's gonna go right to the chat. Oh, Mike, <laughs> hey, I mean, it's great to have a fellow Tommy on board, so it's a great day. I mean. Just quickly, the, the Washington Wizards did clinch the playoffs, so Connor was wrong there. Uh, clinched the play-in, rather. But. Wait, did they really? Wow. Mike, that was a great pick. I, I wasn't even like, oh, they're 100% going to make the playoffs. I'm just said, I just said they have, they have a really good shot, and Connor totally shot me down. But anyways, that, 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 that's a story for a different day. All right, so if you're new here, smash the subscribe button. If you're not, welcome along to the journey. We're on episode number 86 we always start with go of the number. Mike, I want to throw it to you first. Who do you think is the go of the number 86? You know, Matt, I think you're going to be a little bit excited with this because I'm going to go with a Green Bay Packers wide receiver, James Lofton, eight-time pole <laughs> bowler, one-time all-pro, part of the 1980s Hall of Fame team. Um, he, was, he was just a really, really good uh, receiver for the Packers and um, the Bills in Baltimore. Uh throughout his what um like 15 year career um he's had some really really great seasons like 1300 yards seven touchdowns um just consistently consistency you know plagued him from not having one of the best wide receiver careers of all time but he had those seasons where he was really good and he had those seasons where he was not you know as good so i'm going with james lofton here is the he's the best option I hate to break it to you, but he was actually number 80 at the Packers. He was 86 on the Bills. Um, but, Ooh. <laughs> no, I was looking at that. You know, I was like, uh, you know what? You, Mike, you, that's okay. They only have to wear it at least for a couple games. I picked one guy that worked for like three games. So. <laughs> All right, well. He's no. good anyway, Mike. I, I feel like that's a, that's a fine choice. And, you know, his, his year at the Bills, um, I'm sure, was – I was a little confused when I was looking at it, like a pro football reference and it said 80, 80, 80. I'm like, what? I'm like, whatever. I, I guess I'll stick with him. If not, uh, Heinz Ward is another good pick. I'm sure that's going to be some uh, an, another option here. Anyways, Matt, go ahead. I'm going to go to Tommy Muma. I feel like he – Steelers fan over here, casual Steelers fan. I feel like he knows where to go, though. <laughs> Yeah, I am a casual Steelers fan, but Mike brought him up. We got to go with Heinz Ward today. Uh, Four-time Pro Bowler, two-time Super Bowl champion, a 1,000 receptions exactly in his career, 85 touchdowns. Um, He was great. You know, like you said, I'm a casual fan. Even I know Heinz Ward, but it's partially for Madden too. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's the clear pick today. Got to go with Heinz Ward. Did you say for Madden? (laughs) Yeah, I used to play back in the day. Um, oh, man. I, I would love to see you play now, Tommy. I know. I haven't played in so long, but might have to come out of retirement. All right. <laughs> Over to our guest. Who do you think is the GOAT in number 86? Well, I'm going to go with Buck Buchanan from the Kansas City Chiefs. He played from 1963 to 1975. Uh Kansas City Chiefs, number 86, retired jersey, uh, AFL all-time team, six-time first-team all-AFL, six-time AFL all-star, two-time AFL champion. He was on the NFL 100th anniversary all-time team, second-team all-pro in 1971, two-time pro bowler in 1970 and 1971, and then finally, to cap it off, Super Bowl champion, 
fourth Super Bowl over the Minnesota Vikings. I know Matt's going to like that. So I'm going to have to go with, with Mr. Buck Buchanan, and he's got a cool name. Long with the accolades. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's kind of, it kind of swayed me a little, but I'm going to stick with oh, my Oh, one more thing. He also played defensive tackle. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. He was I, a big boy. Yeah, on that <laughs> – Chiefs defensive line. Um, I'm gonna have to stick with Heinz Ward purely based on the fact because growing up, that's that's who I've seen, and uh, you know my my dad's a huge Steelers fan, so I've seen a lot of Steelers games. Saw the two or one the one Super Bowl I really remember against uh, Arizona, the Super Bowl loss against Green Bay. Of course, I remember that. Um, but what Heinz Ward did is he was a really good wide receiver for Ben Roethlisberger. You know. Ben couldn't win with Antonio Brown, but somehow he could win with Heinz Ward. So uh, even though Antonio Brown is definitely more talented, but Heinz Ward, nonetheless, great receiver. Buck Buchanan, great player. Shout out, um, shout out Nikita Kucherov, who's actually coming back, supposedly expected to come back uh, this playoffs. And Tommy, I know you want to shout out another Eagle, number 86. I'm not going to do it. I'll let you do it. Oh, Zach Ertz. Yeah. Oh, we don't know if we're going to care about him soon. <laughs> Zach Ertz <laughs> could be traded from the Eagles, but nonetheless had that really good Super Bowl victory. I'm always going to be uh, stuck in the Eagles remembering that. Any other – Tommy, baseball player or no? No. You know what? I have to go and check this to be sure, but as of 2019, no baseball player had ever worn 86, so – we're going to have to change this. So I haven't picked a baseball player since like 72. So we got to switch it up. Yeah. I mean, the, the graphic we posted, it was all, all five NFL players. All of us actually did all have five NFL players. Isn't that terrible? We got to bring the baseball players back. Mike, any, any honorable mentions before we head into our. Uh, n- no, not any honorable mentions, but that, that was a good pick by Tommy. I was also uh, considering Buck as well. All right, we're going to move into NHL playoffs coming up this weekend and into the week. And then we have the NBA playoffs coming up next week. I'm sure we'll talk about that during next episode. But today's all about the NHL. Tommy Mumaw, you look excited over there. I'm so excited. You kidding me? Hockey's my second favorite sport, even though I've never watched the game. But I'm ready for it. (laughs) We'll meet you guys there. Welcome back to Go Chat. For the first time in forever, we're talking about the NHL. We got Matt here. We got Tommy here, who's a big NHL fan as well. Tommy, of course, the biggest NHL fan I know. So I'll swing it to Matt first. We're going to start on the North Division, start off with Toronto and Montreal. Who do you got winning that series and end in how many games? I mean, yeah, Mike, I think the last time we talked about hockey was the finals yeah. of last, last year. Um, but – Toronto, Montreal. I think Toronto is going to really control this, tr- control this match. I think, uh, or this series rather. Toronto is a very talented team. We've talked about them before. The, the players that they have. Um, so I got them in five. Just, just plowing through Montreal. Not sure if it's going to be a sweep or not, but I, I say it's either going to go in four or five in Toronto's favor. Tommy Kane, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with Matt. Uh, I got Toronto in six. The only reason why I do have them in six, I don't think it's going to be close to a sweep. I think Montreal is going to uh, play a little harder. They got Carey Price coming back, who who's known for, you know, doing some good stuff in the playoffs. And Toronto, they have that uh, they have that little curse that they have. It's been, I think, 15 years since they won their first uh, – or 15 years since they won a playoff uh, – Series. Playoff, not game, but series. So, but I think Toronto's going to do it. They've been well all year. Tommy Mumau, what do you think? I got to agree. I got Toronto in five on my bracket. Um, <laughs> hey, you know me. I'm not the biggest hockey guy, but I love Toronto. So we're going with them in this one. Yeah, I got to agree with you guys. I think it could be a sweep, but the only reason I'm giving Montreal all game is because of uh, that. What Tommy came alluded to that Carey Price is a beast, and I think he'll be able to steal a game off of uh, Toronto. Anyways, let's head to the other North Division matchup. We got the Edmonton Oilers and the Winnipeg Jets. Matt, what do you think? This is a great matchup. You you got Edmonton with Connor McDavid, who's literally playing unbelievable. One of the best hockey players I've ever seen. He's going to go down as one of the best. Then you got Winnipeg with. The best American goalie, Connor Hallibuck, 
it's going to be a great matchup. I think it's going to be forced into seven games. I can see it going either way, but I'm just going to give it to Edmonton because of the firepower that they have, the star that they have in Connor McDavid, Dry Seidel, Nugent Hopkins, those type of players. I think it's going it is going to be it's going to be one of the best series. Ser, series, series, I don't know. What's the plural series? series? Uh, but series. Uh, I think it's going to be one of the better series in, in the first round, but I'm going to take Edmonton in seven. All right. Tommy Keane, what do you think? Uh, Edmonton in six. Winnipeg has not been playing that well overall. They did win last night against Toronto, but also Toronto wasn't really going too hard on them. Uh, Edmonton, you got Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, of course, and Mike Smith actually has been a a uh, dark horse for them. He's been very good in that. I think he's going to come up big. Halibut's a good goalie, but it's going to be tough to stop those two guys. There's not going to be too much defense in this game in this series. So Edmonton's going to win in six. Mm-hmm. Thomas, what do you what do you think? What, what do you got? Sorry, I was muted. I got Winnipeg in six for the upset here. You know, I feel like you got to have some upsets in every bracket, right? Um, but like you said, Connor McDavid, he's great, led the team in points, goals, and assists. And that's probably the obvious pick here if I followed hockey. But we're going with an upset because, you know, you got to love it during tournament time. Yeah, why not, Tommy? You know, I, I feel you there. But I'm going to agree more with uh, Tommy Kane on this one that I think uh, Winnipeg hasn't been playing up to – you know, their greatest ability um, as of late, ever since they've lost Nikolai Ellers to a season-ending injury, they really haven't been the same team. And they aren't good defensively. I think Dry Silo and Mc, McDavid are just going to tear them apart in uh, six games. And um, heading over to who's actually going to come out of the North Division, I actually do have the Edmonton Oilers. I think Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen have been huge for them this season. And I just don't believe – until I see Toronto have some playoff success, I just can't see them. Their defense is is much improved, but I'll take uh, Drysdale and McDavid and the rest of that team over – even though Matthews is the best goal scorer in the league. You know, I, I just like the Edmonton Oilers as, as a, a whole unit more than I do with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I have them coming on the North Division. Uh, Matt – what do you think? We have them coming out of the north. Hey, Toronto. They they really control the north the whole uh, season, and you know they they do have some playoff uh, playoff miscues and you know not not too much luck. But neither did the Lightning last. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago they were uh, blowing blowing uh, blowing leads. But give me give me Toronto. I'd love to see Edmonton in it though. Mm-hmm. All right, Tommy Kane. Who do you got coming out of the north? I got Toronto beating Edmonton in seven games. The only I- issue I have with Toronto is how Jack Campbell and Freddie Anderson are going to do. I think that's a big question mark. They've been having some goaltending issues, but I think Toronto overall is just a stronger team this year. So I have them coming out of the North. That, that's fair. I, I really like the star power with Edmonton. I think it's going to overwhelm um, Toronto. But finally, Tommy, who do you got? I got to agree. I got to go with Toronto here. Um, you know, for everything you said. So we're going with Toronto. I got the Toronto blue one. Like, come on, I got to go with Toronto. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's head over to the East Division where we got a one and four matchup between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the New York Islanders. Uh, Tommy Kane, I'll swing it to you first. You are a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Do you have them winning this matchup? And if so, how many games? Yeah, I got I got Pittsburgh in six. Uh, overall, I, I believe Pittsburgh was um, won six games out of the season series with the Islanders. Uh, they've been very strong. All four lines are going well, and also they have they have all their players back from injury too. So I think just overall they're they're stronger. The only def- the only difference that the Islanders might have over the Penguins is is defense and goaltending. But I think Pittsburgh's firepower, like with Crosby, Malkin. Gensel Ross, they're gonna they're gonna come out and overwhelm Varlamov. Good pick there, Matt. Who do you have? Give me the Penguins. I got Penguins actually in, in six too. Love what the Penguins were able to do this year. I didn't think that they were gonna be too hot of a team, but obviously I, I was wrong, like usual, with the, when it comes to the Penguins. Other Tommy, what do you think? <clears throat> yeah, 
I got the Penguins in six games here. And uh, like you said, Sidney Crosby, of course, um, he's the man there. Six points over his last five games. Jeff Carter with six goals over his last five games. So those are some people to watch. But um, yeah, I got the Penguins in six. Nice. I think I'm going to wrap it up here with uh, the Penguins in six as well. I really do think that the Islanders can push this series to seven games and maybe even win it, just given Barry Trotz and how good that defense is. Um, ever since they lost Andrews Lee, they haven't been quite the same team, but I'm still going to take uh, the Penguins here in six games, just given how consistently good they've been over the whole season. Plus, Jeff Carter has been a huge acquisition for them. All right, moving over to Washington and Boston. We got a nice gritty matchup over here <clears throat> for the second uh, matchup in the East. Tommy, uh, Muma, I'll swing it to you first. Yeah, so I'm going to go with Boston in seven games here. I think that they're going to pull a little bit of an upset um, over the Capitals. And let's take a look. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I picked Boston a few times this year, and they've lost. And then there's times where I picked against them, and they win. And so my gut was telling me the Capitals, so I went the other way. And uh, I think we got the Bruins there. All right, good pick, good pick. Uh, other Tommy, who do you got in this matchup? I agree with Tommy. I'm going uh, Boston in seven. Boston is four, two, and two against the Capitals this year. They've also been very hot as of late compared to Washington. Washington slipped a little bit towards the end of the season, giving Pittsburgh the, the division title. Uh, this is going to be a back and forth, like you said, gritty matchup for sure. I think there's going to be a lot of scoring as well with how well these two teams play. But I think Boston overall, and Boston's got better goalies too. So I think Boston takes in seven. Matt, who do you have? I know I said Edmonton and Winnipeg would be one of the best matchups. I think this one's going to be the best matchup of the first round. Two amazing teams. Uh, Washington, I picked them to win game one tonight on Saturday. We'll see how that goes. But I think Boston's going to come out here in seven. Boston's just offensively a fantastic team. The first line of Pasternak, uh, Marchant, and Bergeron. Three amazing players. They got Taylor Hall as an addition for, like, literally nothing. Um, you know, that, that's going to help when Taylor Hall is not the star player when they have a star um, first line. And then obviously took a Rask, who had an injury uh, through the season. You know, Boston kind of slipped when Tuka was hurt. Now he's back. And Tuka, we know Tuka is one of the best uh, best goalies in the league. And if he stays, hopefully he doesn't dip like last uh, last playoffs in the bubble. But I don't think he will this this uh, this playoff. <laughs> Yeah, I have I have Boston in six as well. I'm really surprised we all picked Boston here. I thought it was going to be a nice little um, upset for me, but I guess uh, picking the Capitals would have been an upset. Anyways, um, they've finally gotten healthy. They've been banged up all season, either Tuca being out or Bergeron or Marchand, and they've been really heating up as of late, um, especially with ever since they added Taylor Hall. This has been a completely new team, completely rejuvenating offense. And also Mike Riley um, from uh, Ottawa, I'm pretty sure, has been a huge addition for them on the defensive end as well. So I got to go with Boston here. I love them coming into the NHL playoffs this year. All righty. So, uh, Matt, I'll swing it to you first. Who do you have coming out of the East Division? Pittsburgh and Boston, two great teams. They know how to play in the playoffs, but I'm going to give it to Pittsburgh. Um, you know, I think Pittsburgh's a very talented team, like I said, coming in here and I picked Pittsburgh a lot. I think last year before they got bounced out by the Canadians, I thought Pittsburgh would make a deep run. I picked Pittsburgh in the finals like three times already in the past since since they had their little run. So I got to go with Pittsburgh here. When you, when you have a leader like Sidney Crosby, he's going to get you there. He's going to get you places. Jake and Bake Gensel, just immense talent. Car Jeff Carter addition, I, I think Pittsburgh is going to be set uh, – for a deep run in the playoffs. Love Boston though, but we'll see. All right, Mr. Pittsburgh Penguins fan over here. Are you gonna agree with Matt? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna agree. Pittsburgh had a tough time against Boston during their uh, regular season. In the past few uh, times they met in the playoffs, they also have had a tough time. But I really think the big difference maker is gonna come with uh, Brandon Tanev for the Penguins uh, getting back. He knows how to score against Boston. 
he put up a pretty good uh pretty good fight against them last time especially when the penguins won and i think he's just going to be a difference maker uh helping kill that boston power play so i think penguins are going to have the edge the only thing i guess i'd be concerned about is is if tristan jari can can play at that high level that he's played at in the last few games tommy what do you think yeah i agree <clears throat> that uh, Matt and Tommy said so gotta go with Pittsburgh here uh, I just think they're the better team and I have them going pretty far in the postseason so gotta roll with them here that's fair that's fair um, unfortunately I'm gonna go with Boston I'm gonna veer away from uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins train a little um, I love their goaltending a lot more with Pittsburgh like with uh, what Tommy alluded to Tristan Jerry he really started the season really cold and he obviously he's heated up a lot since, you know, th that point, given that Pittsburgh finished first in, in the division. But I think his inexperience uh, combined with um, the offensive firepower that the Bruins had now with Taylor Hall, um, I just think that's going to propel him um, to the semifinals. All right, so that wraps up the East Division. Let's head to the South Division, where first we got – Carolina in Nashville. Tommy, King, I'll swing it to you first. All right, I got Carolina in five, and I know a lot of people are going to think, oh, why are you doing that? Nashville beat Carolina the last two games. Well, I think just overall Carolina is, is more of a consistent team compared to Nashville. Nashville's been shaky. They've been up and down. Carolina's got players like Sebastian Ajo, Tio Teravine, and also their, their goaltending hasn't been too bad. It's been surprisingly well. I think Carolina just very hungry, and I think they're going to do it. UC Soros, the starting goalie for Nashville, is, is very uh, inexperienced in these situations. All right, Matt, what are you thinking? Man, the, the fourth spot should be Chicago. This is not. <laughs> I, I thought it. I thought it would be after that start to the uh, start to the year, but I actually I, I think this is my only sweep. I mean, let me let me double check. Yeah, it's my only sweep. I got Carolina sweeping them. They, they sweep in the playoffs all the time. So, if you give me a sweep here. Bring out the brooms. Someone's going to sweep. <laughs> Tommy Muma, who you got? I don't have a sweep, but I do have Carolina. I actually have it in six, but you know me. I'm just throwing numbers out there. But, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, you know, I got Carolina. How do you say his name? Is it Sebastian Ajo? There you go. There we go. Um, he's played well as of late, five uh, points over his last five games, three goals over the last five. So got to roll with him and uh, Carolina here. Yeah, I, I'm agreeing with you guys. I think it's going to be a sweep. You know, I don't really think Nashville is a good team at all. Charles might be able to steal a game just given how hot he's been lately. Um, maybe uh, even Rene comes in one game and uh, steals one for them. But I got uh, Carolina's sweeping the prairies here. All right, going to the 2 3 matchup in the South Division. We got a crosstown rival in Florida, Battle of Sunshine State. I'm super excited for as a Florida Panthers fan. We got the Florida Panthers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Panthers have home ice. Matt, what do you got in this matchup? Mike, close your ears because I am all for the Tampa Bay Lightning, baby. I'm, I got them winning in seven. Uh, Stamkos is supposedly expected to be back. Like I said, Nikita Kucherov, he's supposed to return in the playoffs feeling better than before. I don't know. Nikita Kucherov is their best player pretty much. And, you know, when you have a player at that caliber, no matter if he's 100% or, like, not 100%, he's better than the average hockey player. So I think that these two additions coming back – and then you got Andre Vasilevsky at goal, uh, goaltending. You know, I, I, I got to go with Tampa Bay. Listen, Florida is fantastic. They have fantastic goaltending, too. Um, but it, it'll be interesting to see. This is also one of the better. I just keep saying there's, like, one of the better series. But this, this one's going to be good. All right. Um, Tommy King, who do you got? Well, I'm going to have uh, Tampa Bay in seven as well. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit, though, before Tampa Bay can start can start producing. I know Nikita Kucherov is not hurt, but he's going to be going back into the lineup and he hasn't even played all year. And then Stamkos, you, you never know. It could be a hit or miss. And then Victor Hedman, too. He's a big, big deal on their defense. If it's, it's all a hit or miss when he comes back as well. 
Uh, Florida's a good team. Tampa's a good team. I'm just, I think Vasilevsky's going to steal a few games, and I think Tampa's going to take it in seven. Another good pick there. Tommy, who do you got? I have Tampa in five, which, you know, that's probably a little bit of a hot take here. But Tampa was my team last year. Wrote them all the way to the title at our bracket challenge. So we got to go with them, of course. Um, you know, Blake Coleman played well four points over the last five. So we're going to go with them. Is it going to happen? It's probably going to be Mike's team, but we'll see. You know, Tommy, I rode Tampa all the way to the finals last year too, but I got them getting balanced in the first round in seven. I think uh, four with home ice advantage is going to be huge here. They've played, in, they, ha they had a top five home record this year and they have really played Tampa really well this whole year. Andre Vasilevsky against every other team uh, in the Central had above a 920 save percentage against Florida, below 900 save percentage. While he's going to be fantastic, he's going to steal at least two games for Tampa Bay, given he's the best goaltender of our generation. I just think that um, the Panthers are getting a bunch of players back too, like Patrick Hornquist, Sam Bennett, Brandon Montour, um, Jonathan Huberto, who didn't play those last two games against Tampa, which they blew Tampa out of the water. 5-1 and 4-0, uh, um, I'm giving Tampa an extra game just because um, with Kucherov coming back, Hedman getting healthy, Stamkos getting healthy. I'm very nervous about all that. But, of course, I got to roll with my team here. And I really do think that they're talented enough to beat a team that um, they won five out, of, five out of eight games against this year. So I got to roll with Florida here. Kucherov. He might be he might be in your nightmares, Mike, coming up. <laughs> He's gonna be in my nightmares. He's gonna <sighs> anyways, that's gonna be a really good matchup. I think that's probably gonna be one of the best matchups um in the whole playoffs. Uh and it's it's exciting. Anyways, Matt, who do you got coming out of the south here? Give me Tampa Bay. I mean, there it's gonna take like you said, it's gonna take time for them to get really healthy, get into the mix, um, get get all their guys back, but I, I truly think if they get fully healthy, fully healthy enough, which I think they will, that they can make a run to the beating Carolina, even though Carolina is very, very great team. Uh, I think that they'll – listen, if you had to tell me how many games it would be, I'd say seven against Carolina and winning that. Tommy Kane, who do you got? I'm going to disagree. I think Carolina matches up better against uh, Tampa Bay. They've They've done it all season, and – Carolina has just been very hot. A lot of people doubt them, and I think they're going to ride that underdog mentality, even though they are the number one seed. They feel like underdogs. I think they're going to beat out Tampa Bay. Tommy Muma, what are you thinking? Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Matt on this one. I got to go with the lightning all the way. Well, not all the way, but in this one, we're going to go with Tampa. Uh, yeah, that's who I got. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you guys. I'm going with uh, Carolina. Um, I, obviously, I'm agreeing with Tommy, but as much as I'd like to think that Florida is going to beat Carolina, they haven't done it all season. I think they might have won like three out of eight games against Carolina. Maybe if they had Ekblad in the lineup, um, I would pick Florida here. But I just think Carolina has been one of the best teams in the league, if not the best no facet of their game is weak at all. And they have one of the three best goalie tandems in this whole um, bracket. So I got Carolina heading out of the central. I'm sorry. I've been saying South this whole time. It's the discover central this division. My bad. <clears throat> Anyways, heading over to the Honda West division. We got Colorado St. Louis one, four matchup. First off, uh, Tommy Muma, who do you got? I got to go with Colorado here in five games. Um, you know, I'm sure that Tommy Kane and, and Matt and you will have some more information about this one, but I got to go with Colorado. Tommy Kane, what do you got coming out of this matchup? I got Colorado in seven, believe it or not, and that's because I think St. Louis is, is scary right now to play. They've been – They've been firing on all cylinders. Their goaltending has gotten – Bennington's gotten a lot better. Huso has actually not been too bad either. He's made some good saves. I think um, I think they're going to give Colorado a tough time. And I think a lot of people are going to start down in Colorado, but I think this is actually going to make Colorado stronger when they come out of this one. Matt, who do you got coming out of this 1-4 matchup? 
I got the Colorado Avalanche. I love their team. I love them last year. I had them going to the finals against uh, losing to the Flyers. Obviously, that didn't happen. I, we don't need to talk about that. But I love Colorado. I mean, the addition of Devin Dubnik, too, as their backup goaltender was, was a nice addition, especially when you need that in the playoffs. That's something that they lacked last year. And then the star power that they have, Landis Gog, McKinnon, Rantanen, Kel McCarr, Kel, Cable Car McCarr. I got Colorado here in five, if I didn't mention that already. You know, I, I got Colorado here as well, but I, I got it in six. Um, I like what uh, Tommy said. Sorry. Um, I think that they've been, uh, St. Louis has been playing really well lately. Um, I think they'll be able to get two, maybe even three games off Colorado. But I think at the end of the day, Colorado is just probably – the most talented team in the league and they're going to come out of this matchup in my opinion moving on to through two three matchup we got the vegas golden knights and a kind of surprise for this season the minnesota wild i'll swing it to you matt who, who, do, you, who do you think is coming out here minnesota they've played fantastic this whole season but i gotta go with vegas vegas is a very strong team with their goaltending over there mark andre Fleury, who's kind of had a bounce back season if you want to call that um playing really well this year and then Robin uh, Leonard. Um, so I, it, it's like it's like these the top two teams, Avalanche and Golden Knights. I think that they're just very they're very very talented, and I think that they're just going to control their their games. I got um, Vegas in six though, because I think Minnesota is um, very they've they've played very well uh, this this whole season. And um, I'm blanking on the guy, the rookie Kaprizov. Is that his name? Yeah, he's been very cool. very good player. Tommy Kane, what do you think in this matchup? Uh, I got Minnesota in seven. They've matched up very well against the Knights this year. They've gone five, one, and two in their eight games. Uh, Kapril Kaprizov, Eric Sinek has been very good as well. Kevin Fiala. I think Vegas is better when it comes to the goaltending, but I think overall Minnesota is going to keep um, keep Vegas off the board a little bit more. I think they, they can play well against them. And, and just overall, Vegas has had trouble in some playoff games recently. I think Minnesota is kind of fresh and they're ready to go. Tommy. Yeah, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to go with Vegas in seven games. I think that Minnesota is going to push it to seven, but I got Vegas here. Um, let's take a look. Riley Smith, he's leading uh, Vegas over the last five with seven points and five goals. So we're going to go with Vegas. You know what, Tommy? Tommy Kane, I'm going to agree with you. I got Minnesota upsetting Vegas in seven. I've had a lot of trouble with this bracket. Like pretty much just before this episode I got on and I had Vegas winning the Stanley Cup. So I've been uh, <laughs> really back and forth with this. But after looking at the injury report, Pat already didn't practice Friday. They are pretty banged up with Alec Martinez and uh, some other players like Peyton Krebs. I'm not fully healthy. So I think, and Ryan Reeves, even though he's not the most talented hockey player, he gives Vegas um, a, a really double-edged sword in their lineup with how much grit he brings to the team. So I'm going with the Wild here. Like Tommy said, they, they've matched up against uh, Vegas really well this whole season. And I think they're going to pull a, off a big shocker in the first round. Do they, anyway, do they pull off a shocker and beat Colorado? No. In, in my opinion, I, I don't think so. It's definitely a possibility. But uh, I got – personally, I got Colorado coming out of this end of the bracket. Um, I probably have them beating Minnesota in six or seven. But anyways, Matt, what do you think? I got Colorado. Colorado. Vegas, Vegas, Colorado. It's going to be, it's, I think if they get to this point, it's going to be a great matchup. I'm just going to take Colorado. Tommy Kane. Uh, Colorado, I think, is just better overall than Minnesota. And, and Colorado doesn't have too many weaknesses, which is really good. And they got some, they got not only a good defense, but some good offensive defensemen as well, which Matt talked about, Kale McCarr. So I think Colorado is just, just overall, I think this is really their year to shine and they're going to beat Minnesota. I can see it in possibly five or six. Tommy. Yeah, I'm going to mix it up here. I'm going with Vegas coming um, out of this division. We'll have to see. I don't know. But 
Um, hey, there's always some surprises, and Vegas is going to do it. There you go. You know, v- Vegas is a great team, Tommy. Probably the best goaltending in uh, the, the, the whole league. So, great pick there. Anyways, so finals matchup. Um, we, we each gave our picks for each division, and they're going to match up in the semifinals. Let's get who we got meeting up in the finals. Uh, Matt, I'll throw it to you first. I got Pittsburgh losing to Colorado. I got Colorado as the champion. Uh, like I said, very talented team. I think this is their year to year to shine. Tommy, Kane. Yeah, I agree with Matt. I got uh, I got Pittsburgh and Colorado, and uh, unfortunately for me, but fortunately for for Colorado fans, I think Colorado just. I know they haven't played each other, but I just think Colorado is just stronger, like I said. Tommy Muma, what do you think? See, this is a little out there. I got Pittsburgh over Vegas winning, and Pittsburgh's going to win the whole thing here. So we'll have to see. You know, I, I, I've been contemplating back and forth with this. I could literally see, you know, Vegas or maybe even Tampa winning the whole thing. And I have both of them getting bounced in the first one. I really think that this year there's so much parity between all these teams but i have boston beating colorado in the stanley cup finals i'm going to switch it up here i you know i think it's just such an obvious pick for colorado um to win the stanley cup because how fantastic they've been all season you know even when they're not hot they're still winning six seven out of ten games right so um i i just don't you know, obviously I went with more of a favorite last year with Tampa, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I think it's it's very rare for the President's Trophy winner and the obvious best team in the league to come out and win the whole thing. And I'll be a little surprised if they, they even do get to the final, just given the history, but they definitely have the talent and the experience to do it. So if they don't do it this season, it's going to be a disappointment for Colorado. I got Boston coming on top and winning the whole thing. I really love um, what Taylor Hall has brought to the team. And, of course, their goaltending is phenomenal as well. Austin? You, you, is Connor Wood in there? No, <laughs> I no, feel no, like no. Connor, I feel like Connor is picking Boston to win too. So maybe you guys could agree on something. <laughs> well, Connor's picking Boston, and then I'm screwed. So. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really do like Boston as a team this year. I can see Carolina winning it. I can see Florida winning it. There are so many different teams, and that's what's going to make this NHL playoff so exciting for all um, NHL fans out there. Um, I think it's going to be a great, you know, month and a half. So I got, I got Boston coming out on top. Yeah, it's going to be exciting once these teams get out of their division also that they're finally playing uh, – yeah, you know, someone outside. And I, I think whoever comes on the North is going to get absolutely crushed by whoever they play. I just think the North division has been so overrated. They've been playing the Canucks and the Senators and the Flames all year. I mean. The Sens, bro, the Sens jerseys, though. <laughs> yeah, they're fire, but that doesn't give them, like, plus five speed or anything. <laughs> I, I really think that, you know, yeah. either Toronto, Edmonton, even, I don't know, the Jets maybe. But I think they're going to get crushed by Colorado or another team like that. Anyways, anyone have any more comments on this very complex NHL playoffs this year? Nope. Needs needs to be fixed. (laughs) Hopefully next year. Back to normal. Yeah, Yeah, hopefully next year we'll we'll be uh, back to normal, back to to the good old uh, four division. But anyways, thank you guys for tuning into this segment. Make sure to stick around. We got Go of the Week coming up right now. So, as always, hit that like button, subscribe, follow our socials, and we'll see you um, very soon for Go of the Week. Welcome back to the Go Chat. We are back with the Go Picks. Look at the leaderboard. I'm still on top by one game. We'll see if Boston, who wins that game, because we obviously don't know. Boston, Washington. I picked Washington. Mike and Connor picked Boston, and Tommy picked Washington, too. We got four great games coming up. We'll start with Sunday's games. Golden State is going up against Memphis. They're both the same record as of right now. Um, Curry was hurt. I don't know if he's going to be playing. I, I, if, if take that as you want, but I'm going to take. I'm going to take Memphis here because I don't know if Curry is going to be playing, and 
Memphis is going to need to win this game. And they've, they've been doing a lot of load management with Jaron Jackson Jr. and uh, Kyle Anderson. So I think when, when they come back, it's going to be better. Um, Connor picked Golden State. So Tommy, who are you going to go with? Tommy Muma. Yeah, um, this is a tough one. I'm going to agree with you, Matt. I think I'm going to go with Memphis in this one. Um, you know, I think it'll be pretty close, but yeah, I'm going to give the advantage to Memphis. Mike? Uh, I'm going to go with Memphis here as well. Um, I, like, I think the Curry injury is huge. If he's out of this game, it's 100% going to be, you know, um, Memphis winning this game. But I, even if he does play, I'm not sure if he's going to be 100%. And I don't really think it would be smart for Curry to play this game if he's hurt. So I think Golden State is going to make the right choice, not mm-hmm. playing. And I'm going to make a right choice and pick Memphis. Tommy Kane. I'm going with Memphis for all the same reasons. Go Grizzlies. <laughs> uh, we got game one of Florida versus Tampa. Give me Florida because as much as I was vouching for Tampa Bay, they're going to need to get take a little time to get back and to uh, get back from injury. And obviously, you know, Mike Mike said the Florida home record. So uh, I'm going to take them there. And I know Mike wants me to take Tampa Bay right now. So that's just even better. Connor's going with Tampa Bay, Tommy Mumo. Yeah, I'm going to go with Florida because, I mean, you know me, I always got to go with the home team. And I think that Tampa's <laughs> ultimately going to win this. But finding out that they're the home team, that does it for me. So let's go Panthers. Mike? Uh, yeah, I'm going with the home team here. I'm going with Florida. You know, all, all these jokes about Florida, you know, not having fans and stuff. I'm, I'm telling you, the BB&T Center is going to be rocking Sunday night. And Florida's going to come out and win game one. Hopefully Bob turns in the playoff Bob mode and uh, they make a big run. But I definitely got Florida here in game one. Tommy Kane. Yeah, I agree. I got Florida. Like I said, I think it's going to take Tampa Bay some time to really start gelling. So I'm got Florida game one. And their home record is good. Going over to the baseball, Tommy uh, Mumaw's favorite. We got the New York Mets going up against the Atlanta Braves. This game is on Monday. Give me the Mets. I don't, I don't like how the Braves have been playing lately. Uh, Connor's going with the Mets too. Tommy, Muma, are you going to agree? I'm going to disagree. The Mets have been playing great. They were on a seven-game win streak, and they've looked really great. But um, they got Max Freed going on Monday night. Uh, so I'm going to go with them. And the Mets, their starters to be determined as of now. But, um, but like you said, they've looked really good. Um, they lost to Tampa on Friday night, but they've really been rolling the Mets. So they're starting to get going, but I still think that Atlanta is the best team in this division and it's a big divisional matchup, but I got Atlanta. Mr. Matt over there. Are you going to go with the Mets? <laughs> of course I'm going with the Mets. How can I not? Um, I, I, I'm not sure who's going to be pitching for the Mets. Maybe uh Tom Walker or Joey Lucchese, but let me tell you, Tommy, Max Freed is not a reason to pick for the Braves. He should be a reason to pick against the Braves. He's been pitching absolutely horrendously this whole season, over a six ERA, whip over um, one, 1. 1.7. Jesus. Um, his yeah. track record is what does it for me, and they're the home team. Listen, Max Fried is going to get fried by the Mets Monday night on national TV. Um yeah, there's nothing not, uh, much else for me to say here. The Mets have been playing really hot. Well, they blew a 2 nothing lead in the eighth uh, Friday night against the Rays and allowed a walk-off hit. But other than that, they've been playing uh, really well, and things are starting to come together. Tommy Hain? I'm going to go with the Braves since, uh, since Tommy went with the Braves, and he knows a lot about baseball. And the, the, NL, the NL East is, is very uh, tight, isn't it? So... I think the Braves will come out and win this one. Final game, game two of uh, Vegas Golden Knights going up against Minnesota. This is tough because it's game two. And I'm trying to think if I want to go game one. Give me Minnesota. I got that in six, I'm pretty sure. I'll take Minnesota winning game two since it's game two. I got Vegas game one, but game two, give me Minnesota. Connor went with Vegas. Tommy, who are you going to go with? Tommy Mumo. I- yeah, I got to roll with Vegas here. I mean, I got them going pretty far into the postseason. And, um, yeah, they're going to win this game. Mike, I feel like you're going to go with Minnesota since the face you made. You know, I was thinking about it. I was, like, thinking, you know, maybe, 
Vegas will take game one. Minnesota will take game two. But since you picked Minnesota for game two, and with uh, Max Pacioretty being questionable for game one, I'll take Vegas here. Maybe I'll switch it up. You know, I, I need to start gaining some ground uh, with uh, the poor start I had. So I'll, I'll take Vegas here just to try and catch up. Tommy Kane finishes off. Yeah, I agree with Mike. I, I think Minnesota is going to take game one, and I think Vegas is going to tie it up for game two. Okay. That is go picks. We got go of the week coming up next. I know it's a rather long episode, but please stick with us. We got a great go to the week segment for goats, great players um, coming up next. <laughs> Welcome back to go chat. We are back to finish the episode off with the go of the week. Look at the leaderboard. Mike has been on a winning streak of two. Nice job, Mike. You, you finally got into the double digits, I guess. Uh, you had Stanton last week, right? Yeah. No, Stanton. Oh, wait. Yeah, you had Stanton. Who yeah. ended up winning that? Mike. See, I wish I went with Stanton, but he took him. Back. I picked him, like, right at the beginning of the week. I was like, oh, after he uh, had that big game, uh, I yeah. thought he was going to be really hot. So, I took him early. Start us off, Mike. Who are you going to go with? I'm going with Russell Westbrook. Um, he passed Oscar Robertson all-time triple doubles this week um, with his 182nd triple double. I'm pretty sure he's going to average a triple double for the f- for the fourth time out of the last five seasons, which is absolutely insane and has only been done by one other player one time in NBA history, and that's Oscar Robertson. And also, most importantly, um, he – he was the catalyst as to why the Wizards um, were able to clinch a spot in the play. And he finally got healthy. And once he really got back to full health, the combination of him and Bradley Beal um, really was able to open up a lot of space for the rest of the players on that team. And they were able to go on a really hot streak to end the season and clinch uh, a, a playing spot. So Russell Westbrook, he's been absolutely um, one of the biggest pieces as to why the Wizards have had their limited amount of success this season and just an, an absolutely historic accomplishment with 182 triple doubles. And he made it 183 um, last night against the Cavaliers with 21.17 assists and 12 rebounds. He's he's a stat machine, and it's Russell Westbrook here 100%. Yeah, the, the Wizards definitely won that trade now looking back. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think we can actually say that. Tommy Muma, who are you going to go with? Yeah, that's a great pick for Mike there. But I'm going to go with Jared Kelnick of the Seattle Mariners. Number four prospect in all of baseball. There's been a lot of hype around him. Uh, You know, lots of people thought that he should have been called up at the beginning of the year and the Mariners were manipulating his service time. But he is here. And uh, he debuted on Friday, or no, Thursday night, excuse me. And he went 0 for 4, struggled a little bit. But then Friday night, he comes back and he checks all the boxes. His first major league hit was a home run, and he went three for four, three home runs, uh, two runs scored. Um, wait, did I say three home runs? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, three RBIs, I meant to say. Um, so he is hitting 375 in his early career. And, um, you know, he's going to be an outstanding player for them and, you know, really exciting for baseball fans. So got to go with Jared Kelnick. Great pick. Tommy Kane, who are you going to go with? Oh, I'm going to go with JT Comfer of the Colorado Avalanche. He got his first ever career hat trick on Wednesday night against the Kings in the 6 nothing win for the Avs. And then he also scored the game winner on Monday night, a 2-1 game against the Vegas Golden Knights. And just overall, especially this week, he has shown that even with Nathan McKinnon being out, he can step up to the plate. And he is a young guy, too, and American. 26-year-old American from Illinois. I think he deserves go of the week. Love to see it. Love to see it. Tommy, if, if you win, that counts for Connor. Uh, oh, so, cool. So, uh, Connor, better be hoping that uh, that you win there. Um, my go of the week, I'm going to go with the honest Antetokounmpo. <laughs> I, I, I still, to this day, don't know how to pronounce his last name. It's pretty <laughs> bad. Um, but the week he's had – he got 40 points against the uh, Pacers. I think that was last two nights ago, uh, 13th. Yeah, two nights ago. Um, game before that, 27. Game before that, 28. Also got a, um, a double-double in both those games because he got 12 rebounds against Pacers, 10 against the Orlando Magic. The guy hit a three-pointer 
one for one from three against the Pacers. And most importantly, to top it all off, he's expecting another baby with his uh, girlfriend, I, I, girlfriend, fiance. I'm not sure. I know they're not married, but either girlfriend or fiance. So all in all, he's not Russell Westbrook. I kind of mad that Mike got that, but uh, Giannis, I, I hope, you know, he's got the face for, for someone to pick him since he's so popular, but he is my go of the week, Giannis. Giannis, so just keep it there. I don't want to have to put you that last name again. <laughs> Nonetheless, great episode. I'll finally talk some hockey. Connor, hopefully, will be back next week. He should be. He should be. Connor, if you're watching this, you better be back. Um, and, and hopefully, hopefully, we're all here. <laughs> thank you guys for another great episode at 86. Tommy Kane, thank you for being here. We love to have you on the show, bring some great insight um, with the NHL talk here. Anyways, as always, thank follow you. us on our socials, like this video, spam in the comments. Um, spam who you think is going to win the NHL Stanley Cup this year who's going to hoist um, the cup and as always subscribe and we will see you later have a good one